everyone, this is Mike, and today we're looking at Human Interface, Be a Better Human. This is the second game in the Human Interface series, and from my understanding, it can be put together with the previous release, or can be played as a standalone. Now, I'm going to be totally honest right off the bat. I wasn't sure if I was going to do a playthrough for this, because as you'll see, I have some issues with the game. But I wanted you to see it in action, how it played, and where my problems cropped up. Maybe some of you can correct me on the rules errors I'm making. I'm not sure, but I just wanted you to kind of be able to make your own opinions on this. So for some context of the storyline here, this is the third mission of the campaign in the game, which can be played co-op or solo. The sort of main character is Len Ka, or maybe just Len Ka, I'm not quite sure how to say her cyberpunky name. And she was previously captured in an earlier mission by these uh, evil corporate forces. And uh, now her team is trying to come rescue her and she's trying to escape. I'll read through the flavor text to kind of give you the feel of what we're doing. Do be aware that there are some grammar issues and translation issues. I'll try to read past those and say what I think they meant. And also they do use a few bad words. So if you don't want to hear some profanity, maybe just skip past this part. The cold wind redoubled. A shiver rocked her body. And in a blink, everything had changed. The co-processor managing her hormone booster suddenly kicked in, sending a wave of adrenaline washing over her. Her paroxysms intensified, and the human interface took in a robust load of information from the waking flesh. The control system struggled for a split second, was then forced to deactivate its guard protocols after a jolt of fake yet soothing data from the core server. Her shot at freedom created by this unlikely ally was clear. Time to haul ASS. Paying back the favor would come later. She didn't doubt for a minute that the unknown party would come to collect its due sometime. Whatever. What counted was that she was her own master again. Her eyelids lifted slowly. Despite her overwhelming frailty, she hadn't been linked up long enough for her muscles to go completely limp. Besides, the adrenaline coursing through her veins, mixed with euphoria and anger, elicited a sense of invincibility. As though she were still in the digital world, but now with a virus laying waste all around. She couldn't let her guard down. The danger was as real as it comes, and she had been stripped of her weapons and gear. Luckily, her brilliant mind was still in working order. It took her a few seconds to fully awaken, and immediately her perception turned in a status report. Her conclusion was straightforward. The unarmed and unaware up for guard would be eliminated first. So you have kind of a feel of the overall setup. It's pretty spread out. I've got my four team members over there. I've got this big map I'm moving through. Some of my enemies over here with their information. I'm to show you my main character. She's got zero cyber shock. That's kind of like her uh, being taken over by the machines inside of her. She's got her full wound stat, which is five. Then over here we got some other things, her physical, which is 5, that she uses to attack, her speed, which is movement and dodging, also a 5. Her mental is a 7, you'll see how that comes into play later. And she's got some special abilities related to cyber shock and using her cyber deck. Uh, we'll see a little bit of that in this mission, but not too much. And this guard she's about to tussle with has uh, 5 physical, 4 speed, uh, some armor stats over here when you get hit. And you'll see that he does not use the full five health. He has only a single wound, which is how most of the AI kind of controlled characters work. So there's a bunch of phases in the game we can skip. First, we would be affected by viruses, but we don't have any. Then we would get system resources and try to hack into things, but she doesn't have her cyber deck yet, so she can't do that. We determine initiative by bidding, but that's only used in the competitive game. So here it's just us going and then the op for going. So basically we can skip all of that and I'm going to get two actions and then if this guy's alive he's going to get two actions. Now what the mission wants me to do is to interact with this and do the little special objective text that the uh, mission gives me so let's do that. So many possibilities. Kick him in the knee joint, grab his left arm in his head, then give a pull and send him flying. How about a triangular choke and as he weakens twist the blockhead until he's dead? Right, a chokehold would be pointless then. Can I even lift him up? I miss my gun so much. The guard is not suspecting an attack. His card is flipped to its crippled side. Len.ka strikes first and draws three can-do cards, keeping the highest value. Resolve the close combat as standard. If Len.ka wins the combat, read subsection 2. If she loses, the mission fails and the game ends. Bad luck, try again. <laughs> yeah, so if I fail this first test, I can start the game again and take this first test again. So uh, we'll still show you how it works, but clearly we're going to go until we pass. So there are no dice in the game. How attacks generally work is the attacker is using their physical stat and they're comparing it to the defender's speed stat if the defender tries to dodge. The defender gets a free three-point bonus to their dodge. Oh, and by the way, he's on his crippled side, so he only has a three speed. And both characters draw a can-do card, which has values from a one to ten, and they add it to their total and see who wins. So Lendaka has a special thing that she's getting the best of three cards. So there's a five. So 5 plus 5 physical is 10. 
And the Black Side Agent has three plus three bonus when dodging, plus a 10. Okay, so I fail to hurt him. We start the whole mission over. <laughs> Let's uh, try that again. Okay, Lem.ka punches him as her first action. There we go, nine plus a five is a 14. And he's got three plus a three bonus for dodging, plus a seven, so that would be a 13. Bam, he is defeated. Now normally we check our damage, which with a uh, close combat attack would just be four damage. We compare it to his armor. If I hit him on the chest, he would have five armor and take no damage, but on the head, arms, or legs, he would take one damage and be defeated. But there's a special combat, so not much time left. As soon as the others find out, I chalked I guess choked or clocked, <laughs> choked their friend. They'll come at me in droves. I can see the storm, it's so close. Should be some weapons there. All right, there's the elevator at the end of the hall. I've got a plan. I'll grab the headset to keep tabs on the location. Note to self, cut down on the chatter with myself or someone's bound to think I'm crazy. Ha ha ha. Okay, so uh, Landaka gets a key to all the zero one doors. She may open them. If she goes through one, she leaves it open until the end of the turn and she has to get to the next objective token. So the next objective token is here behind this door and all the green level one doors she can open now. Now that did end her turn, but there's no enemies to go. So she just gets another turn. She gets two actions. With each move action, she can move up to her speed. She can move diagonally and going through a door doesn't cost an action. So she'll go one, two, we'll just leave it open. Three, four, five, leave that one open. And for her second action, she'll do the second objective token. Running down the hallway, Lendot Ka heard an explosion. Clouds of smoke billowed ahead, flashing with the light from gunshots. Meanwhile, in her headset, sounds of combat mingled with plentiful and familiar curses. Confused by this turn of events, she spat out a burning question. What are you doing here? Hello? Someone from the rescue team could hear the yelling coming from the op four comms. The buzzing, coupled with screeching and drumming against the microphone, indicated someone on the other end was putting it on. What do you mean, what are we doing here? We're saving your decoded ASS. Don't head in our direction. They're coming for you, even though we're spraying them something fierce. There are labs to your left. You can find SHIT. He kicked me. Hang on. A string of obscenities ensued, followed by the sound of metal giving way to a heavy object. Come in. I'm back. We can't stay on this frequency. There's a ventilation shaft dead ahead. I lobbed our comm set through it. Look for it. Get a move on. Out. With no time for inquiries, Lenka set off, keeping an eye out for the rescue team's comm set. Okay, so now it says she must head for the next objective token. Everyone else comes in and exit A elevator. You'll see that in a second. Okay, now it says Tankin N1, that's an enemy's main priority is to kill Len.ka, ignoring other characters. Don't know what that means because there's never any instruction to spawn a Tankin N1. So uh, yeah, not sure what that means. The game resumes as normal and we have to get to this next objective token. Now it says second, but this was the second. So I guess they mean the third. All right, so all the way over there is Elevator A. I've put my three new team members there. Len.ka is still over here. We've collected that second objective. And just a quick narrative note, uh, it said that they were blasting guards left and right, but then the mission also said that they come in with no weapons, so I guess they threw them all away when they came up here. And as I mentioned, they said there was an enemy, but it's never actually spawned. So uh, there's nothing to really stop us from just taking as many turns as we want until we get to the objective token. And that objective token is over here. So, you know, let's just skip through a bunch of random turns and say, uh, yeah, here we are. Bam, all my friends uh, together again. Okay, so we'll start a new turn and uh, get that objective token. Len.ka retrieved the headset lying by the wall. I'm so confused. Why couldn't they just give it to her? All right, as she put it on, she glanced at the nearby terminal. It was turned on and unsecured. Somebody had used it recently, and from the sounds of the struggle developing in the elevator, must have left it on. The temptation was far too strong. Before she would make contact with the team, she went through the data and found something intriguing. Okay, so... <laughs> like, are, are these two tiles in the corner not supposed to be connected? Like, the team's not supposed to be able to get to me? They're just stuck in an elevator? Who knows? Who knows? Because there's definitely no doors on the setup diagram that would indicate they couldn't get to me. But narratively, I guess that's what's happening. All right, before she could make contact with the team, she went through the data and found something intriguing. It turned out that the Nakamura Corporation was overflowing with bold ideas and was currently devoted to a curious project. But before she could discover more, the screen went blank. After a brief fit of rage and fist slamming to the keyboard, a new message popped up. Access denied. For more information, contact the network administrator. Her exhaustion growing, Lenda Ka resignedly straightened up, looking for her things, and armed herself. She turned around, raised her arm to motion up, and took a few steps. Coincidence? No way, she thought as she faced a pivotal decision. Go for the elevator and avoid endangering the team or take advantage of their presence, seeing as they were the ones who had asked for it. <sighs> okay. So it says I place uh, three enemies on each of these entry points. 
Anytime there's fewer than two enemies on the board, I respawn them. Uh, the other characters can retrieve equipment from eliminated models, so if they kill a guy, but again, I, I don't know if they're actually supposed to be with me, whatever. Uh, Lendaka gets her default equipment, we'll see that in a second. And then I need to either uh, hack a terminal up ahead of me or uh, go down to a different elevator. So the terminal option would mean I'd have to uh, hack this computer here, go through and then hack another one. I'll show you what that looks like so you can see how hacking works. As for the robot enemies, they spawn on these three spots. And again, if I uh, kill two of them, then I'll just spawn another one in. Like literally every turn, if there's fewer than two on the board, uh, more come up. All right, so just to show you, Lendaka got some equipment. She's got her gun, which if she's shooting at range zero to four, not sure how you get to range zero, you do five damage. If it's range four to eight, you do four. I guess at range four, you go with the better one. And it's got a laser sight, so she has a plus two to hit. And she's also got a cyber deck that's going to give her two system resources. We'll see those at the beginning of the turn. Uh, make her tactical network stronger. And uh, she can hack into things. And it's got two cyber shocks, so I guess I put her cyber shock up to two right away. I'm not quite sure. So each of my characters gets two actions. We'll have Lendaka go over here and open the door for them because they still can't open it for themselves. And uh, then she'll uh, finish her move here so she can interact with this terminal next turn. And then for her second action, she's going to shoot at this guy over here. Now she's got a five physical plus two from her gun, so that's a seven. And he's got a five speed, but remember he'll get plus three for dodging, so that'll be an eight. Then he's also got this ability that he can get no penalties when doing a reaction shot against somebody shooting at him. But then the rulebook also says they don't do reaction shots, so maybe he does it. Let's say he does it. So he gets a little reaction token, and he does his own can do. So he's uh, normally we get a minus three, but doesn't here. So he's five plus five for ten. And Lendaka's speed is five, but she gets plus three for dodging. Easily does it. All right, so now her actual attack. She gets a, a seven plus five, which is twelve, plus her two bonus from her gun, which is fourteen. And his dodge is oh, okay, he actually misses. So the seven on the card doubles as the hit location, which is his chest, which has four armor. But he's got this cyber gear that gives him, oh, plus one arm armor, not chest armor. And my gun does five damage at zero to four range, and I'm only three away, so he does take a damage and is eliminated. So when we eliminate him, we're supposed to get his weapon, which is a Harstel Lightning Heavy Weapon. Now, weird thing, uh, along with a lot of them, there's only two copies of this card. And we need to have one with the enemies so we know what they attack with. So I'm not sure after we steal one, what would happen if we killed more of the enemies? Would we steal extra cards? Copies that don't exist? I don't know, but for now, Lenka gets this and as an action she could throw it to one of the other characters. And by the way, there's like a noise mechanic where you get some noise for shooting a weapon like she did. And you get extra noise for the characters that are in the place. Uh, these guys could run down and try to attack the enemy, but why bother? Uh, the enemy's clearly going to come toward us. So they have five speed, so one, two, three, and I guess they'll stop there and try to shoot somebody. And they'll uh, shoot at the closest, so let's say he shoots at uh, you, Bolt, here. He's got a five physical, she's got a five speed, so she's going to be three above him with a dodge. He gets seven, she gets a nine, so she dodges. And by the way, some of the uh, can-do cards that resolve tests at the bottom will have options, like she could discard this to get an adrenaline card, which is something I haven't talked about yet, but... Uh, you get them for, like, killing guys and hurting them, and you can activate special abilities. But if you get too many, you get hurt by all the adrenaline in your body. Uh, sounds pretty cool. Not that awesome in actual practice. And our other friend, one, two, three, four, five. And I guess he can see Len Ka through the door. So we'll shoot at her. Five versus five again. He gets a seven. She gets a four with her plus three. Oh, so he actually does hit her. So remember, his seven counts as where he hits her, which is in the chest, which has four armor. His weapon, the copy we haven't stolen from him, does five damage. So she takes one damage, which uh, the way this game goes is pretty much the most damage you're ever going to take from an attack. All right, at the end of the door, all the doors close and all the alarm tokens go away. And all we have to do to win this is have her hack this one, run in there and hack that terminal and we're good. How hacking works is you have this big deck of cards. You draw five of them and they each have a cost to install and run. We'll show how much uh, stuff you get. You get defenders that can stop the bad guys from doing stuff to you, but they don't have too much point because the bad guys don't actually do anything to attack you. You got little boosters that can give you more resources or make another program stronger. Attack programs, that's what I'm about to use on the terminal here. Now in terms of resources, we get one per character, that's four, plus uh, extra resources if they have a high mental stat, so that's uh, another three 
four there, so that's eight. And then our little cyber deck uh, that Lin.ka is using gives us another two, so that's 10 resources. All right, so let's see. The attack we want to use costs two to install, so that'll leave us with eight. And then we'll make it three stronger. That costs two, so that'll leave us with six. We'll put a system defender out in case they do attack us back. That'll leave us with three. And let's see, we've got enough to run both of these. So let's make our defense stronger and our attack stronger. Actually, here, let's put this one on there. All right, so this thing normally has a strength of two. It's going to have plus six, so that'll be a strength of eight. And this one has a strength of six plus two, so that has a strength of eight as well. I'm going to try to hack this terminal. If I had resources left, I could spend them to make my hacking more likely to succeed. And against the AI, I'm just going to draw the top card. Okay, so first look at their strength. It's got a five. I'm going to do a can-do test. I've got eight. They've got five. See if I succeed. If I get eight plus eight is 16. They get a six, so an 11. So we do win. That means we will hack the terminal, and the uh, door is now openable for us. But additionally, this one tries to infect us back with five strength. We've got eight defense, so let's do another test. It gets an 11 total. I get a 12 total, so they fail to infect our system. Anyway, with that, I think I've shown you enough, as much of it as I want to show you of the game. Uh, we would just run through here. These guys would come up. Maybe they'd do a damage to each of us. And we would uh, go hack that terminal and win the mission. So uh, that's it. Go watch my review for more detailed reasons for why this game uh, troubles me greatly. But I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you at the next stop.